This is my Selle SMP TRK. I've had it for nine months. I've also ridden 7,500 kilometers on it. Just bear in mind though, that this is a review of the non-gel saddle. Also, all of that mileage, it's been done together with my Surly Long Old Trucker and nearly all of it whilst touring. It's a long overdue review, so let's dive in and let's see how I got on. The Selle TRK, it's not an expensive saddle, but at the same time, it's not at the budget end either. If we compare it to other touring saddles, the more expensive ones are saddles like the Brooks B17 and the Physique Argon. Either of these you can expect to pay around $150 for. In the middle of the range are the Ergon ST and the Selle SMP TRK gel saddle. You can expect to pay around $70 for one of these saddles. Now the saddle I'm reviewing, which is the non-gel version of the TRK, you'd expect to pay around $50 for. For those of you searching at the budget end of the market, the charge spoon comes in at just $35. So when it comes to cost, the TRK, it's an affordable saddle and it's well within the budget of most people who are thinking of touring. It's not without its faults, but it offers lots of quality and lots of value for money. That's why I give the TRK 9 out of 10 for cost. Weight's not the most important thing when you're choosing a touring saddle, but it's still worth considering. The TRK weighs in at 395 grams, though I actually make my version to weigh 412, and the gel saddle comes in 60 grams heavier. If we take the official weight coming in, at 395 grams, that's not bad at all. It might not satisfy the weight weenies, but it's certainly a lot lighter than something like the Brooks B17, which comes in at a rather thumping 530 grams. I think when you take into consideration the style of saddle and the amount of materials that's gone into making it, overall, it's not a bad weight at all. I'll give it another 9 out of 10. The Selle have been making saddles now for 120 years, so you'd think by now they'd be pretty good at it, and on the whole, the fact is that they are. The good news is that Selle are actually made in Italy, but even better, they're actually handmade in Italy. However, I do have a couple of moans and niggles about this saddle, so let's take a look at those first. Firstly, as you can see, the cover it's actually coming away from the frame. I'll take this off and you can get a closer look. Okay, I've took the bit of electrical tape that was holding that together, but look at that. Yeah, that, that's pretty bad. And that happened at about 4,000 kilometers. I don't think this design is actually very good and there should be something more substantial to hold the padding onto the frame. Not only is the padding coming away here and here, but it's also starting to come away here and here as well. Another thing I don't like is the way the padding's sealed onto the frame. It looks cheap and nasty. These raised edges, they do nothing for the overall look of the saddle. Very poor. More positively, the rest of the saddle, it's held up pretty well. The padding feels good, and for 7,000 kilometers, yeah, I'm reasonably impressed with that. I think it'll be good for another 7,000 kilometers. All in all, not bad considering the price. For quality, I'll give it seven out of 10. When you're touring, Comfort's absolutely king. So exactly how does this saddle stack up on longer rides? Firstly, I find I get loads of support from this saddle, partly because of the width. There's loads of padding here, but at the same time, it's not too soft, and there's not 
so much material that it causes chafing on the inside of your thigh in this kind of area. That means it doesn't interfere with the normal movement of your legs when you're pedalling. Another big plus with this saddle is the cutaway channel here. What this does is it gives relief to your perineum so you don't get soreness in your perineal area. I have had problems in the past where there's no cutaway, but with the TRK, that's never been the case. You can also get numbness in the perineum because the saddle is just too narrow. But the TRK, it's so wide that you're never going to get a problem because of this. One final point is I like the drooping nose. It's actually great for helping anchor your thighs and it does give you a lot of bike control. Overall, I've been really impressed with how comfortable this saddle is. I'll score it 9 out of 10. Some might say that the Sally S&P TRK, it's only got the looks that a mother could love, but I find that a little bit unfair. It's actually got some nice styling here with the S&P logos on the rear of the saddle. And I do like the little flag Italian style colors and indicating that it's been handmade. I also like the Sally S&P logo that's integrated into the framework at the rear of the saddle. I actually even like the droopy nose, but I know that's a look that's going to polarize opinion. I know the looks of the saddle and the styling. It's not for everyone, admittedly, but I like the quirky kind of design. And I think Sally have made a really nice job of it. I'll give it eight out of 10. So overall, the Sally SMP TRK scores an impressive 42 out of 50. I think this is an excellent saddle and I've no hesitation in recommending this to any of you. In fact, I like this saddle so much, I bought another one, but this one is the gel version. As far as this saddle's concerned, I'd actually choose it over a lot more expensive alternatives. And the reason for that is it will give me what I really want from a touring saddle, which is comfort. After saying that, it does have some quality control issues that do let it down a little bit. However, overall, it's going to take one hell of a saddle to persuade me to take this off my touring bikes. I love it. If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe. It helps me out tons. Thank you very much. Enjoy your bikes, enjoy your rides, and I'll see you in the next video.